The New York Times this morning, a former newspaper, ran a video op-ed uh, called something like Stop Telling Me America is Great. And they, they ran this thing. Uh, it's very well made. It's very clever. And it puts forward the idea that this whole idea of America being great is ridiculous. Here's, here's a cut. America, the greatest country on earth. A narrative packed and sold to tiny patriots, reinforced by every cartoon, movie, cheeseburger, and mattress sale. Guaranteed. A mythology so entrenched, our most beloved personalities urge us never to question it. Don't let anyone ever tell you that this country isn't great. This right now is the greatest country on earth. Greatest country God ever gave me. You're the greatest country in the world, I'll tell you that. No, America's the greatest country in the world. But what if we did question it? It's a really dishonest video in a lot of ways. First of all, the entire setup that uh, uh, children are being taught, all the pictures of the children being taught are from the 50s. You know? So the idea that children today are being taught this is a great country is kind of garbage. And the fact that you put, um, you know, they put uh, Michelle Obama and then they put Sean Hannity to say, oh, it's back, back both on the left and the right that they're saying it's a great country. We know that the Obamas did nothing but apologize for this country. We didn't forget that Michelle Obama said the first time she was ever proud of her country was the day her husband happened to get elected. Uh, so, you know, we know it's really only one side. And then they go on afterwards. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but they go on afterwards and talk about all the ways they think America is not great. And they they use, um, you know, some of the stuff they say is fair, but a lot of it is is questionable. So they use our high poverty rates without mentioning the fact that poverty in America is wealth anywhere else because of wealth transfers. The problem we have here is not that people don't have enough money because they can get enough wealth transfers so that people in, living in poverty today are living uh, at a fairly high level compared to other countries. If you've ever been to another country, with the exception of Democrat cities where people are homeless, uh, that's the kind of poverty that is widespread in a lot of other countries. And they'll talk about uh, the high uh, mortality rate among uh, infants without mentioning the fact that we try to save a lot more infants who have been born so early that they would die in any other country. So, that, you know, the statistics are questionable. Uh, but I don't think that there is any question that there is any question that this is not the country that it was. That is the fact that that is the reason Trump is uh, so popular with his slogan, Make America Great Again. So the idea is something has been lost. And I think after eight years of listening to Obama apologize for this country, after eight years of listening to news people, uh, like Katie uh, Couric, who said she was uncomfortable when she saw the American flag, when she saw a uh, somebody wearing an American flag pin. Wasn't that going too far when we were supposed to wonder why al-Qaeda disliked us instead of just bombing them into the Stone Age? I mean, why should we, wa why should we wonder why animals like al-Qaeda dislike us? They dislike us because we're better than they are and we're free. That's why they dislike us. And it, and it goes on to talk about how we're not free. I mean, it's, it, it really is a dishonest video, but still, still, I can't help feeling that everybody senses, everybody senses that this is not the country that it was and something was lost. And a lot of the people on the left say, oh, that's because you're a racist. You want to go back to those days of Jim Crow and go back to the days when women, you know, were uh, stuck in the house and all this stuff. But that's nonsense. That's absolutely absurd. What people want is to go back to the days when people were proud of their country, when their children were taught to be proud of their country. And yes, now we understand that people were left out. Let's include them too. Nobody's against, I don't think anybody is against that. I think the problem is that we've lost some sense of pride. You know, uh, Gallup has a poll out. It says, as Americans prepare to celebrate the 4th of July holiday, <clears throat> their pride in the U.S. has hit its lowest point since Gallup's first measurement in 2001. While 70% of U.S. adults overall say they are proud to be Americans, this includes fewer than half who are extremely proud, marking the second consecutive year that this reading is below the majority level. It's only really a 2% decline, which is kind of meaningless. Still, people were extremely proud of America. The last time that number really spiked was after 9-11 when people suddenly realized, oh yeah, good country. But when you read close, more closely into this Gallup poll, it's the Democrats who weren't proud. The latest overall declines in patriotism are largely driven by Democrats whose self-reported pride has historically been lower and has fluctuated more than Republicans. 
Democrats' latest 22% extreme pride reading is the group's lowest in Gallup's 19 years of measurement and is half of what it was several months before Donald Trump's 2016 election victory. So they're happy when they're winning. Uh, They're not happy when they're losing, which is not true of the Republicans who remain very proud even during uh, Barack Obama. Republicans have remained extremely proud of their country, and the latest 76% reading is just 10 points below the high recorded in 2003. Even when Barack Obama was in office, Republicans' extreme pride never fell below 68%. And that's, that is really telling to me. It's really telling that when the Democrats lose, they lose their pride. In other words, they're only proud, like Michelle Obama, they're only proud of a country they run, and they cannot see that there might be another way. Whereas Republicans are proud of the structure. They're the friends of the founding, right? They, they understand that the founding is still in place even if they lose an election. The fact that there's an election, the fact that it works the way it's supposed to work, the fact that we transfer power peacefully, uh, that that people are still constrained by the Constitution, Obama less than any other president I can think of, but still you know, was, was constrained to some degree by the Constitution and by the separation of powers and by the courts who gave him a record number of 9-0 defeats uh, in, the, in the Supreme Court because he overreached on his executive powers. The, so we remain proud because we feel the system is in place, where as we know, when the Democrats lose, it's suddenly, oh, we got to get rid of this system. we gotta get, we got to stack the Supreme Court. we got to get rid of the Electoral College because they are only proud of this country when they win. And that is the difference between somebody who's proud of the founding, who's a friend of the founding, and someone who is just proud of himself and think his his own glorious compassion and virtue is going to transform the world into something it has never been ever. Okay. And that's, that is the difference.